Hi everyone, my name is Peter Watson. Welcome to the Fusion 360 Showcase. Through these videos, I'll be highlighting some of the standout functionality of Fusion 360 when compared to other CAD CAM software. There's a lot of chatter surrounding Fusion's design and machining functionality. From a cost perspective, it's extremely well priced, offering a wide range of services from design to assemblies to generating your drawings for the workshop and of course manufacturing. This helps to avoid costly machine crashes as well as speed up your workshop's production. I'm not here to tell you what to think, I'm here to share my own experiences, so let's get to it. Let's start with a humble 2D pocket. So we had a request from a client who was now looking to see how much work can we do within one operation. So instead of creating multiple operations or multiple tool parts, how much work can you do within one tool part? I'd like to call this sort of 2D pocket to the max. So I have section viewed this component and set up the stock as we're going to be focusing on the tool parts. So let's go and select our 2D pocket. Step one, obviously, we need to select our tool. In this case, I'm using a eight millimeter flat end mill. All right. Now we need to go across to our geometry tab, select the face at which we want to be machining that pocket. By doing and selecting that bottom face, it will automatically calculate the depth, which just speeds up things quite a lot. And I'm going to click OK so we can see what we get as a starting point. So if you right click on your tool path and you say simulate, we can now see the tool is helixing into the job and working its way out. So if we zoom in here, we can see we've got stock that's remaining here. So it hasn't actually machined everything. And for a roughing operation, these step overs are pretty small. So what you want to do is now let's go see what can we actually do with this tool path. If you go into edit, and we go across to our passes tab. Our step over is currently set at 0.5. So I'm gonna set that to three millimeters. Another very cool feature that we've got here is multiple depths. What I like with this is you can set your roughing step downs, but then you can also come and you can actually define a value for how many uh, finishing step downs you wanna do. So in this case, I'm gonna set my finishing step downs to two. So I want to rough out this component at three millimeters. Then I want it to come and do two passes at the end with a finishing step down of 0.2 millimeters. So we can get a nice finish on the bottom. I'm also going to take here, so that stock that we had to leave, I'm going to untick this now because we, we're basically doing a, a roughing operation and a finishing step downs in one go here. So I'm just going to take stock to leave off. Let's click OK. And let's see what we got. So, there it's coming down. It's stepping down at the much bigger intervals. It comes down again and again. And here we go. And it is now cleared and done those two much smaller step downs at the end to create a finished pass. What about the walls? And this is what he wanted to do is he actually wanted to make sure that there was also stock remaining on the walls that it would come and do the same operation on the walls as well. So if we go back into our toolpath and we now activate finishing passes. So multiple depths will be your step downs. So we've currently got it set at three millimeters and come and do two passes at a step down of 0.2 millimeters so we can finish off the bottom nicely. I'm going to untick this final rough and I'm going to show you why now. A lot of clients I've noticed um, as default, this, this box has not been ticked. So I'm going to show you why now, why this is important when you are doing multiple operations. Uh, so finish passes, I'm going to also select this now to two, a step over of 0.2. And we click OK. If we now go and see what happened. So there it's going to come do the big step downs, step down, step down. Now at the end, it's going to come and do our finished passes on the bottom. And we can see it's now going to be removing the small amount of material on the bottom. 
there comes down for that. On the bars. And it's also now come on the sides. You can see here are our two smaller step overs to the side and our two final step downs over here. And it's happened to a few people where if you are now getting this island in the middle here, the reason for that is, and it's something important to note in Fusion, your, your 2D tool parts do not reference stock. Uh, that is what your 3D operations are for. And you'll notice in your 3D operations, you've got a function called rest machining, which will take account or take into account stock that's been removed on previous operations. So bear in mind on your 2D tool parts, um, this does not take into account, um, or, or Fusion does not reference stock that's already been removed. So it literally does exactly what you need to tell it to do. In this case now, where we haven't actually gone and told it to do a final rough, and if, we, if you hover over any function, you're not sure what it says, we can actually do what it says. Enable to apply a rough pass at the final depth when doing multiple steps with one or more finishing step downs. So we're basically telling Fusion to make sure that it goes in machines and roughs out that center part. If we now activate this box and click OK, we can now see And I quickly just also want to change this because he was using a soft material. Um, before we do that, if you go into your linking parameters, your ramp type, in other words, how is your tool coming into the job? Currently it's set to helix. We just want this to plunge in, especially on softer materials. Let's go and simulate. So big step down, big step down, big step down. Now it's coming and doing those smaller on the bottom. And you can see it's taking away on the walls as well. So you can see now, this little step here will be smaller where it's now doing these final step downs and step overs to come and finish it off. And we now have no island and one clean operation. So all in one toolpath, we've had it now rough out the component, then come around for the walls and the floors and do a finish pass as well. And that's all within one operation. Things are getting interesting, Peter. Oh, hey, random, I know. I am Pindile and I'm just checking things out, making sure you all are paying attention. So Peter, how is Fusion 360 better than other CAD CAM software in the 2D pocket functionality? Well, Pins, unlike other software, Fusion 360's unified tool parts seamlessly combine roughing and finishing in one go, streamlining your workflow. Say goodbye to multiple operations and hello to speed, precision and cost effectiveness. There you have it, folks. Choose Fusion 360 for smarter machining solutions. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for tips on the CAD CAM Clash, where I share how Fusion 360 and its extensions outperform other competing CAD CAM software. Remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to access more of this and other helpful content and follow us on social media. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at peter at bakerbains.com.